So, again I have drawn this diagram to summarize what we have discussed, but all this uh, all that discussion was only qualitative discussion and uh, we know that for any reactor design this is the performance equation and in this we know input that is the plant capacity, you know what is the demand. So, you can decide what is the input to the plant and uh, then uh, we should know kinetics and we should know contacting. And first we started with contacting and then found that when do you use actually batch reactors, when do you use continuous reactors and in continuous reactors when do you use plug flow, when do you use mixed flow. I hope that you have thoroughly understood. Then we decided to talk about kinetics and in kinetics uh, you have the classification of homogeneous and heterogeneous. So, uh, the method of designing for homogeneous reactors or the reactions is different or heterogeneous reactors and with heterogeneous reactions is different. And what we get extra at least analytically with so many examples what we have decided was that the chemical factors and physical factors both will be present in the kinetics that is in kinetic model. It is not simple minus R A equal to K into C A. There is a famous equation all the time in all the academic institutions because the first order reaction simplest to integrate and uh, you know easiest to deal with mathematically and also understanding wise. So, that is why always we will say that we have first order reaction and we never bother about what is mass transfer, what is heat transfer and all that, but we had sufficient examples to justify that in uh, heterogeneous systems it is the heat and mass transfer which may control the rate of reaction um, even though it is a chemical reaction, chemical part may not present at all. That is one example which we talked about. Uh, the combustion coal gasification uh, sorry coal combustion. So, in coal combustion many times it is the oxygen transfer to the coal which is rate controlling okay, and the and the rate expression will be simply minus R A equal to K into or K G into C A G. It is not K as a reaction rate constant. So, it is the mass transfer coefficient which you have to substitute there and then find out volume of the reactor instead of actual reaction coefficient. So, that is why always in heterogeneous systems we have chemical and physical systems both are coming and every time as I told you you have to visualize a model write all the steps and all the steps you have to write simple equations most of them will be mass transfer steps only one step one uh, step will be reaction step and eliminate all the intermediate concentrations then you will get what is called a global rate of reaction. Now, the question to be asked which I have also told you sometime earlier during a discussion was how do you define first of all your rate of reaction for heterogeneous systems. Homogeneous systems it is straightforward, and uh, always we will say that moles converted per unit time per unit volume of the reaction mixer, but here you cannot have that reaction mixer because if I have a coal combustion unit I have solids plus I have the gas. So, which one you really take? So, that is why there are various ways of defining the rates for heterogeneous systems. So, let us also record all of them and then whatever is convenient to you as an engineer we should be able to take that, it is left to us and that is where the greatness of engineer automatically comes. You have to choose the simplest one that is possible for you for the design, right. Otherwise most difficult things if you take uh, you know the design will be more complicated, unnecessarily complicated. Okay. So, based on the unit heterogeneous rates, I think I may write here. Rate of reactions are defined based on based on unit mass of solid for uh, fluid solid reactions, fluid solid reactions you know short form of reaction is R x n like action A x n right. So, reaction. So, the, the overall rate or global rate for ith component in general can be written as d n a by d t and this can be also written in terms of words moles of i 
reacted for mass of solid per time. So, this is what we widely use if you have a solid and fluid. This fluid can be of course, either liquid or uh, gas right. And as you know, I have already told you this and weight is the easiest one to measure. Okay? Just simply weighing either 1 ton or 2 tons and then putting it to the reactor. So, but based on unit interfacial area, based on unit interfacial area, in uh, two fluid systems, that means, you have gas liquid for example, right? liquid liquid for example. Okay? So, under those conditions or you can also say that in fluid solid systems, you can also base on the fluid not on the solid. Right? This is your choice, but this one here, this equation if I call this one as 1, this equation is based on the solid phase. I have again fluid phase there, I can also base it on fluid phase. So, under those conditions are fluid solid reactions based on fluid phase, fluid phase. How we write this one is again, of course, to differentiate between this and this, this uh, superscripts are given 1 by s d n i by d t, which is again defined as moles of i reacted per unit surface area. or interfacial area and time. So, this is 2. Yeah, we can also base it on based on unit volume of solid in gas solid system. in gas solid system. So, that will be minus r i triple fine equal to 1 by V s d n a by d t again defined as moles of i reacted per volume of solid. volume of solid yeah, per time. So, this is equation 3. Then the last one, uh, there are many, I am just giving only some 4 5, based on unit unit volume. volume of reactor d t equal to moles of i reacted per volume of reactor per time. So, this is equation number 4. In fact, we can also convert one from the other. So, these equations are simple uh, evidence. Evidently, we can just easily write this d n a by d t 
is just nothing but W R i of 1 single prime. Then we also have S double prime, we also have V S R i triple five and we also have V R yeah. So, this is equation 5 good. I think a lot of discussion can be made on this uh, uh, equations, how do you choose right. For example, we say that here volume of solid and here volume of reactor, what is the difference? Karthik, do you have any difference or no difference? By the solid particles, whereas volume of reactors, including the void volume and the fluid volume, everything included. Yeah, void volume mainly. So, if it is a packed bed or fluidized bed, volume of reactor means it is the fluid plus solid, right? Or otherwise, uh, if it is only solid volume, means what the, the true solid volume. But again, here there is a problem in the sense that if I have a solid porosity, porous particles. So, now that volume also automatically taken in that solid, right. So, we have to be very clear now, how do we define and always I prefer this one, because it is the easiest one, but not it is true all the time. For example, if I have a slurry reactor, right, if I have a slurry reactor, then we have three phases, we have uh, gas, liquid and then solid and the general thumb rule or general convention uh, of defining rate in a slurry reactor is moles of I converted per unit time, per unit volume of bubble free slurry. Okay, so, what is that we have taken there? It is the volume of liquid plus volume of solid, because that is the easiest to measure for me, because and if in the presence of bubbles, the volume will slightly rise, because that much it should, it should occupy. So, then uh, again I should find out what is the hold up of or the fraction of gas that is there in the reactor volume. That is why I think most of us will not tell you the hydrodynamics of uh, chemical reactors. So, that is much more important than um, actually mass transfer and heat transfer and chemical reactions, because hydrodynamics they play very important role in heterogeneous reactor design. We normally do not mention that hydrodynamics. What do you mean by hydrodynamics? Hydrodynamic means we have uh, Hydrodynamics means we have how the the two phases or three phases involved in heterogeneous systems they move. Okay, even though we call hydro, but hydro generally represent water, right? So, but in spite of that, this is the general name given the hydrodynamics in chemical reactors, and where you have to predict what is the fraction of each phase in the reactor volume. Right? That means if when I am operating with certain gas, certain liquid and solids are constant for example, if you take then depending on gas flow rate and liquid flow rate, the reactor occupies uh, you know certain volume of gas or volume of uh, liquid. Solid is constant anyway, right. So, depending on these two flow rates, how these fractions change and those are very important, because if I have a reaction, I mean just imagining that I have A plus B plus C in a three phase reactor going to product, right. So, what I told here is 1 mole, 1 mole, 1 mole, but in the actual reactor because of hydrodynamic conditions gas may not be 1 mole, it may be point not 1 moles, because the hold up is so low. Then naturally that becomes a rate controlling step and you will not have, uh, you will definitely not get more conversions, right, point not 1 percent if you take, you know. So, that is the reason why we should first know the hydrodynamic conditions in each and every reactor, not only that not only the fractions, hydrodynamics will give you not only the hold ups, we also should have flow regimes. You know when I have two phases, solid of course, is there as a batch system and two phases are flowing. So, if I have counter current system, then it is not possible to go for very high values of liquid and very high values of gas, why flooding, all counter current systems will flood even though we know that counter current system is much more efficient than co current system, we know that, but in spite of that there is a limitation on the uh, throughput side, operation side. 
So, that is why that flow regimes will tell me whether what is the maximum gas velocity or maximum liquid velocity which I can take. This is what first you should have done in your mass transfer course also, particularly for packet beds, right? Gas absorption or even distillation. The first thing you do is go to that graph given in a tribal and then try to read what is the maximum gas for a given liquid flow rate. That automatically fixes your maximum throughputs. But how do you find out this for a new column? You have to do. You have to do the hydrodynamics. So, that is why all my research is not actual reactions, even though I teach reaction engineering. Most of the time, this is the first step hydrodynamics. I have never come out of that even after 30 years. Still doing hydrodynamics only. Okay. So, in every system, you should be able to find out you, what are the flow regimes, what are the hold ups and what are the phase velocities. What do you mean by what are the phase velocities? Uh, if it is a fluidized bed, okay, it may be three phase fluidized bed. That means, three phases are going, solid is anyway constant, uh, the volume is, is a batch system. Then, gas and liquid both we send. Right? But the solids have to fluidize. I hope all of you know what is fluidization. Right? Fluidization is the phenomena where the solid particles are kept under suspension, so that they behave like a fluid. Okay? So, that is why we call fluidization. That means, imparting, imparting the properties of fluids for solid particles. Otherwise, solids are immobile. They would not move. Right? So, uh, but I should know what is that minimum velocity that is required for this fluidization to take place. If I do not know that, what is happening? I want to use fluidized bed, but most of the time it is under packing conditions, packet bed conditions. So, that is why the phase velocities and the other extreme is that I may use very high velocity because I do not know anything about hydrodynamics, very high gas velocity or very high liquid velocity. And these velocities have already, uh, they, they may be more than the terminal velocities of the particles. So, if you are not careful or even if you are careful and then put on the top of the reactor uh, a mesh, all the particles will go that is inverse packet bed, because the packing will go and stick to the top, because, uh, because you put a mesh, they are not able to go out. If you do not put the mesh, there is no part, uh, uh, there will not be any particles inside the reactor at all. So, that is why that fixes the boundaries, the phase velocities. That is why these are the factors normally, yeah, apart from that the pressure drops. This is also very important. So, what is the total pressure drop across my column? So, that that is the minimum thing which I have to provide to the pump. Otherwise, I cannot push the liquids from the bottom or, or from the top. So, the pressure drop. So, these are the general things in hydrodynamics what we have to study and all heterogeneous systems, this is the first study in fact. That is why beautifully we have a course called multi phase systems and without multi phase there is no chemical engineering. Okay single phase systems are very, 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 very few. So, minimum you will have two and why even a distillation column you take, right. So, there are hold up correlations. I do not know whether you have used them, but the beauty using, uh, the beauty of using Maccabay Thiele method is not to consider all these things. It is a wonderful design, I say. I think really we have to appreciate as chemical engineers, first of all, I always think that how did these people get that idea, that you are designing a mass transfer column without talking about any mass transfer coefficient. You do not use a single mass transfer equation. right? You simply go for thermodynamics, take VLE data, draw okay? and then go for material and energy balance, which you studied in your first semester. right? Then balance, you will get the operating lines and in between this equilibrium line and operating line, chick, 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 chick. That is all. 10 chicks means 10, 10 plates, 15 chicks means 15 plates. right? Huh? And after that, we have a, a nice fellow called Murphy and go to Murphy and we take Murphy efficiency, maybe 80 percent, 60 percent, 70 percent, depending on the system. Okay. What do you mean by depending on the system? When do you take 50 percent, when do you take 80 percent Murphy efficiency? Have you thought? Normally, we tell you in the class take 50 percent, you take 50 percent without questioning. Okay. And sometimes we just take 80 percent, you take only 80 percent, but you never question. All of you are very good students. Depends on the contacting time. Yeah, contacting time. Contact what time. do you expect, you know, in that design? In that in the, in the, in the, in the, in the 
yeah but in that method on each plate what is that we are assuming theoretically equilibrium, equilibrium. and you know what is the time required for equilibrium infinity. theoretically infinity so that means you can never come back again if you go to infinity right infinite time if you go again where are you i think uh, we will not be there so that is the reason why practically we have to wait for some time right so actually that is a rate process converted into equilibrium process but the actual rate process what we are using rate means you know mass transfer rate is the other approach we have two approaches equilibrium approach the other one is the rate approach and generally if you have a packed bed you use mass transfer equations that's why two films you draw and then uh, you write the mass transfer equation okay and then how the concentrations are changing how the mass transfer coefficient at each and every height along the column all that you integrate and then you of course again as an engineer you will again simplify that in terms of ntu htu and all that because easy to convert for the design so these two approaches but there also you need the uh, this phase hold ups you need flow regimes you need phase velocities and definitely you need pressure drop right and pressure drop luckily we have only one equation for packed beds we have to thank ergun and the story is that you know i don't know whether we really we have to believe this or not someone was telling me that story some uh, not cambridge university some university from uh, uk it seems uh, when he submitted his thesis on the pressure drop of uh, you know pressure drop through packed beds he was failed because there is no contribution from him you know for uh, phd you need some contribution some totally new knowledge which has not been existing till then right but i think people thought examiners thought at that time that you know there is no sufficient newness in this pressure drop of uh, you know, of the fluids through the packed beds he was failed in the examination but you know that failure only we have been to even now using even after 70 60 years that is the only equation no what what else you have all other equations are only some extension delta x delta x extension of that same equation the same thing even it's in monod's equation or meikler's menten equation one of those i don't remember now one of those uh, papers have been rejected saying that uh, this paper is not worth publishing you see in the history of uh, this research and then you know development of concepts some things which we have thrown out that it is a useless concept later that is the only concept that was valid okay so all beautiful histories are there if you just try to understand how chemical engineering de uh, developed or any process developed good so that's why hydrodynamics are very very important for heterogeneous system good so and most of the time if you look at the uh, at the rate equations given in the textbooks if it is a packed bed many times this is the one that is used if it is a slurry reactor many times that is used is based on volume of yeah bubble free slurry that is what and if it is gas liquid system you don't have any choice except that you have to go for interfacial area and you see the most difficult thing in chemical engineering is finding out interfacial area or surface area for solids it is fine solids also has interfacial area but i can easily find out solids interfacial area if i know, know the particle uh, size even particle size distribution so i will go to sieving which you learnt in your uh, maybe fourth semester fifth semester mechanical operations and then you have various sieves maybe between these sieves each time you will have maybe 10% 20% 40% like that and in each category within that you know what is the particle size average size find out that interfacial area surface area so like that all surface areas you can add up i am talking about just external surface areas sieve gives you only external surface area because what i'm trying to say is particles are not changing with the time even in the packed bed so you can easily find out what is the interfacial area based on external external surface area alone but you also have fairly very good techniques to find out what is the internal surface area for the porous particles what are the methods bet is one uh, one method and you also have uh, mercury porosimeters but bet will give you to certain range of pores and uh, mercury also will mercury porous meter also will give you certain other range of pores but all these pores you have to add and then find out what is the total surface area and that will be very useful for catalytic reactions but advantage there is those particles are not changing with time unless you have deactivation 
Okay. So, that is why I am very fairly confident about that, but the systems with gas liquid and also liquid liquid very difficult, because you have the uh, in the liquid liquid system droplets one is continuous phase other one is the dispersed phase. In the dispersed phase you have the small bubbles, large bubbles and unfortunately large bubbles will become uh, will break and then uh, become small bubbles and small bubbles will coalesce and then become large bubbles. We do not know how to really predict what is happening throughout the system in the process. That is why that is one of the most difficult parts in evaluation in evaluating the interfacial area and much worse is your bubbles also. Right? That is why if you are able to design a system where you can beautifully produce only single bubbles or single droplets of uniform size, then this very very accurate surface area is very very accurate, because I have only I have to measure only one bubble size, all bubbles are same afterwards. So, then simply multiply by number of bubbles and then each bubble what is the surface area. That is why I like this uh, uh, screen saver, there is one screen saver with bubbles, I think in windows 7 or so. So, I mean I always put that wherever I go, I have computer in the house or computer here, I, wherever I see I have that possibility, I will push the the, that screen saver, because thinking that how beautiful it would be if I am able to produce that kind of highly beautiful spherical particles on the screen. Okay, but the same thing if I can extend to my research area also that will be wonderful. And I am doing some work on the inverse fluidized beds last uh, maybe 10 12 years. So there we have observed this kind of uniform bubbles. Okay, this inverse fluidized bed is used for wastewater treatment the liquid is sent from the top, because these are the lighter particles that is why it is called inverse fluidized bed. The particles if you just put in a batch of liquid, this will float to the top, because they are lighter particles lighter than water. So, now to fluidize that I have to push from the top right? and that pushing liquid is in simple terms it is the waste water. Right? And then uh, this is a biological process where the microorganisms require oxygen. So, that is why I now send my air from the bottom. Okay. It is three phases counter current system and why should I use an inverse fluidized bed, why cannot you use a normal fluidized bed, yes it can be used. The advantage of inverse fluidized bed is the particles are lighter particles. So, they have less inertia, less inertia. So, due to this less inertia uh, the particles can easily move. Okay, or rotate. When they are rotating, they will destroy the film, liquid film surrounding the particle. What will happen now? Yeah, mass transfer, fresh area generates and then mass transfer is maximum. So, when mass transfer is maximum and particularly if mass transfer is controlled and for even biological processes mass transfer may be controlled, oxygen supply for example. That is why I told you already waste water treatment open ponds. right? very big uh, large scale uh, very very large area you have to use. The reason is that you do not have an efficient way of mass transfer to each and every microorganism. So, they do not work, they will die of suffocation. So, that is why uh, you have to use large si uh, size to compensate for your final production rate. So, in this inverse fluid age, but it is not right, because it is very efficient system where this will break. In fact, it was found that uh, uh, maybe 1.5 to 2.5 times the mass transfer coefficient can increase. Um, number wise you may think it is very small. So, that means, it is directly proportional and you know, if mass transfer coefficient doubles means area will be half area of the system what you are using. So, that way it is very advantageous there what we have uh, observed was when the bubbles are coming and uh, the particles are expanding down right? and in between those particles the bubble size is almost uniform, because the gas has to go through the bubbles I mean through the particles and the liquid is trying to expand the particles. So, depending on the density hold up of the solids, if the hold up of solids is more almost like a packet bed, I guarantee almost uniform bubbles throughout and definitely I know that how much mass transfer you know oxygen going to the liquid. Then that liquid goes to the surface of solid, on the surface we have the microorganisms. So, microorganisms happily uh, take the nutrients or uh, the food from the waste water and also breathe the dissolved oxygen, then happily it will work, it will reproduce, because good 
environment for it because it is good food and good uh, you know oxygen amount of oxygen so that's why what is the next one that is left in the nature Repro reproduction so that's why more and more uh, microorganisms also are uh, developed are produced they, then you will have very efficient process they are also we are studying all the time even now we don't have correct equations for minimum fluidization velocity for example this phase velocities we don't have an equation for pressure drop only recently we have uh, developed that and i think i have to publish that i think we were the first people to say to give a pressure drop equation till now in the uh, in the world that not yet published only student recently submitted his thesis there is no equation for pressure drop in a inverse fluidization bed and of course the flow regimes flow, flow regimes we have not yet done but there are just only one or two papers for studying flow regimes and of course hold up some many people studied and beauty there is if i do my experiments it is not tallying with other experiments so we have some six seven others who have published this hold ups everyone has a different correlation i don't know what to normalize now in fact my next attempt is that you know what is that why different uh, people have given different correlations i am telling all this even in this course because that is what the information you need if you design a new system it's not existing then you have to develop all this hold up correlations flow regime map and also phase velocities pressure drop correlations all that otherwise you cannot design the equation i mean you, you cannot design the reactor right okay so this is what is the what are the general difficulties when you go for kinetics and we decided now we have to concentrate uh, throughout this semester we will talk most of the time on the kinetics part of heterogeneous systems and the first one what we take in this is gas solid non catalytic reactions okay then we will take gas solid catalytic reactions then we take the fluidized uh, fluidized beds will come under gas solid catalytic reactions then we will take slurry reactor right so in gas solid non catalytic reactors we will try to design packed beds and also fluidized beds and in catalytic reactions also packed beds and fluidized beds and in slurry reactor of course there is only one slurry reactor right so this is the overall picture first finding out the kinetics that means kinetic models have to be developed and then we have to use that information in the design of the reactor for either packed bed or fluidized bed or moving bed or rotary kiln procedure is same but we cannot do everything in this course so the at least these important things and very uh, frequently used reactors are these packed beds fluidized beds slurry reactors in the industry moving beds also are used but i think very difficult to control moving bed rotary kilns are again very easy and uh, the design also very easy i think you know even though we don't have to design that but it is very easy to design i will uh, let you know when the, the, the time comes and uh, rotary kilns are mainly used for gas solid non catalytic reactions of course yeah uh, solid solid reactions and non catalytic reactions like uh, gasification okay so people use the rotating uh, kilns okay good so that is the overall picture and uh, now we will go to gas solid non catalytic reactions and first to know in gas solid non catalytic reaction is what kind of reaction first of all you have you may be wondering what do you mean by what kind of reactions okay so example if i can say simply tell you if i have iron ore reduction fe2o3 plus h2 giving me fe plus h2o okay yeah that reaction is quite different that is also non catalytic reaction gas solid when i compared that with gasification reaction or combustion reaction what is happening is here coal plus c plus o2 giving me co2 but there i have the solid product at the end in uh, iron ore reduction whereas here i don't have anything because particle will disappear you may have ash and there are coals where ash is almost negligible 5% ash 10% ash so then there is nothing in the reactor then how do you design the reactor you don't need any reactor which means so that is why and also there are some beautiful reactions non catalytic reaction for example uh, we are using our computers and all that very happily right and silica is one of the things which chips to make and you know how difficult it is to produce that pure form of silica 
and one reaction that is used is silane that also I will write S i H 4 uh, going to S i plus 2 H 2. So, that means actually it is a gas and after reaction I see the solid product wonderful design and I guarantee you if you develop a process now there are many companies that are trying to do in the world you will become a millionaire why millionaire you can become a billionaire if you are able to develop that process of producing pure silica in India no one is producing we are only importing and of course one good thing with us is we don't design chips okay so that's why you don't have to import that much uh, silica someone else is doing that so that is why very big companies like union carbide now union carbide of course is joined with someone else i think you know yeah yeah those people are still trying to get the maximum the, the, the there are some processes but which are very costly which are difficult not only costly process wise difficult that means slight change in the process conditions you don't get silica so, how do you design a robust process and then try to get the purest form of silica? There are still many, many reactions like that. And another wonderful uh, non catalytic reaction I can tell you is ceramics. Chinese have made this technique long time back, uh, you know, beautiful, you know, Chinese porcelain is one of the wonderful uh, qualities, right. But we do not have that kind of quality. That they are doing even now by art rather than using science, because the solid solid reaction is also not that easy to understand and then try to uh, use the scientific information for the design of tea cups or coffee cups. right? But you see the greatness in the art, because art has been developed over the hundreds or thousands of years. That is why they became experts, but unfortunate thing is only that family is expert in that. They cannot communicate with anyone else, but if I have a scientific method, whoever understands science happily they can use that information that is the difference between art and science, because suddenly uh, I cannot become a painter, only it is possible for M. F. Hussain. Maybe afterwards his children, I do not know anyone is uh, his children really painting or not, because genes will definitely work to some extent. Okay? All of us know that, doctors becoming doctors, tennis players becoming tennis players, you know uh, the family, cricket players and maximum number you can say that movie actors becoming movie actors. <laughs> that is the maximum fraction. So, these are all always a little bit genes and then environment, right? Because from morning to evening in a movie actor's house, always they discuss about movie that is good, this is bad. I fought with 100 people, I fought with 10 people today, so I mean on the screen. So, all that they will be discussing. So, slowly the genes also try to change, you know, through the environment, saying that, okay, finally, I have to also become like that, right? So, that is why this uh, first identifying what kind of reactions we have is very important. right? So, now that is why let us just list out some industrially important reactions. Uh, first, I have to take uh, non catalytic or okay, kinetic models for non catalytic. For non catalytic reactions. So, let us say some important important uh, okay, I can write industrially reactions. Okay, we will divide this into different types and I will say that first I have type A reactions, where we have solid plus fluid going to again solid plus fluid. I think just now I have told you one example, what is that? Yeah. So, this is F E 3 O 4 solid plus H 2 gas giving me F E solid plus H 2 O gas. Okay? So, I have to balance this F 3. So, then this is 4. Yeah, then this is 4. 
that is one reaction. The other reaction is of course, roasting of zinc, zinc or Z n S solid plus O 2 gas giving me Z n O solid plus S O 2 gas. So, again if I balance this is 2, this is 2, this is 2, this is 3. I think hopefully right. Huh? 2, 4, 6, yeah, okay. So, that is the reaction. There are many, but I just want to give you only one or two so that you are comfortable. This is type A and type B we have solid plus fluid giving me solid. I have my favorite reaction here that is calcium oxide CaO solid plus half O2 gas plus no SO2 gas giving me C A calcium sulphate and this is one of the famous equations for removing sulphur from flue gases, you know thermal power plants and all that you have. So, from there using this reaction, you know sending this amount of oxygen, this amount of if you have this amount of SO2, this amount of CaO, you can always, this is what one of the very, uh, one of the methods very widely used in fluidized bed combustion. You know in fluidized bed combustion, what do they do? Fluidized bed combustion is very famous particularly for uh, sulphur coals and high ash coals, okay? fluidized bed combustion. Okay? The, and uh, it is a fluidized bed where along with coal, they also put calcium carbonate particles. Calcium carbonate is nothing but our Taj Mahal. Okay? Yeah, they do not put Taj Mahal, I think you know with calcium carbonate particles they just put. What happens is this uh, calcination step is the first one. Calcium carbonate is CaCO3 and uh, if you expose that to very high temperatures, then you will have CaO plus CO2. That is that is instantaneous reaction. That is why you simply throw calcium carbonate particles in the fluidized bed chamber. Then first reaction is instantaneous, it becomes CaO. At any time I will see CaO. So, now this is another example for me to tell you rate controlling step. Which one is the rate controlling step? Either this one or the first one where uh, calcination CaCO3 becoming to CaO. This one is the rate controlling step because that is instantaneous. That means, any time I see that I have calcium oxide, that means because calcium carbonate has been converted to calcium oxide, right. So, then this reaction takes place and you know there are many beautiful things about this. There are at least uh, maybe 100 papers on this, how this reaction is taking place with CaO. Okay. So, what is the beauty in these reactions is that uh, this one, this calcium sulphate has more molar volume than calcium oxide, molar volume. So, that means the volume of particle will increase during the reaction and that is bad for the reaction because the calcium carbonate when it is uh, becoming calcium oxide, you have lot of pores lot of pores means like our blood, uh, like our bread you know what you will you take. Okay. Um, more fluffy the bread is the more porosity in the bread. Just imagine you know without porosity you are trying to eat bread that becomes roti. Okay, yeah, it is not bread. So, that is why the greatness of this modern bread and all that to make a lot of porosity, but still you know it is nicely eatable. Right. So, that is why immediately that uh, it forms large pore, I mean pores inside the particle. Then calcium sorry, then SO 2 will try to diffuse into that. So, if I just look at one pore, this pore may be something like this, okay, one pore, just one pore and uh, I have some thickness of this pore and SO 2 is trying to diffuse there. This is SO 2 of course, with uh, O 2 and all that. 
right. So, then what happens because here I have more constant diffusion no? by diffusion if I draw the profile the concentration SO2 to O2 profile will decrease because of the resistance very small pores. So, naturally uh, that decrease in uh, concentration will come and you have the maximum concentration at the mouth therefore, rate of reaction is more faster. So, when the rate of reaction is more here calcium sulphate yeah, forming will be more and that forms something like this. This is the calcium sulphate. You see now this pore actually now this this is the mouth of the pore all this is solid. So, after some time what happens is this SO 2 or O 2 cannot go inside this blocks, uh, but still I have large amount of calcium oxide that is left inside the pore. This is all waste that means, if I visualize one single particle if this is the particle size where the reaction is practically taking place yeah, yeah. only this here this one that is where you have calcium sulphate and all this is waste for me. That means, I am generating now lot of solid waste or not good quality of calcium sulphate, because outside calcium sulphate inside actually I have calcium oxide. That is why in Germany I saw one company Lurgi, yeah, what they do is they spray water on that. After some time of reaction they spray water on that and you can also do not only in combustion you can do this even outside you know flue gases can be taken out first and then have the calcium you know, same reaction in the separate reactor that also they can do. So, there they spray water what do you think will happen if they spray water? Yeah, because we know the solubility of calcium sulphate that is very high uh, in water, but it will just absorb water and then that water will go and touch the calcium oxide this is CaO and you know the reaction between CaO and water what kind of reaction exothermic or endothermic, ah, but is it exothermic reaction or endothermic reaction highly exothermic reaction I do not know most of you would have not put this uh, white wash in your house you, tr you try to buy calcium hydroxide you know uh, calcium oxide and then make as calcium hydroxide and then try to use bubbles actually. It seems that is the one of the punishments that is given to uh, the olden days one of the punishment that is given to uh, I mean thieves and our murderers by kings you know what they do they will ask the person to stay like this put all calcium uh, oxide around them and put water he also becomes all his bones become calcium he just you know live burnt that is really I mean it was regarded in some uh, you know of course ruthless people at that time kings probably we need them now otherwise things may not work here in our country. <laughs> okay. So, that is why that exothermic heat is used to burn to burn the body right. So, what happens is when they when so much heat is generated inside and uh, the remaining some of the amount of water which is going that evaporates. So, when it is evaporated it has to come out what does that do it breaks and come out. So, when it breaks and comes out all this area is again inside exposed to calcium oxide I mean sorry uh, okay, for SO 2 and uh, O 2 for reaction to take place. You see these are very beautiful simple technique which we never normally appreciate that is why tremendous amount of good innovations are in industry, but they never record because by recording if someone steals like that movie inception or other things. Okay. So, then they will make millions other people also make millions this, this company will go that is why everything is kept under a secret but tremendous technology. In fact, this uh, silane uh, SI from uh, silane is one of the really strongly guarded uh, secrets by, by the industries, because you know without computers nowadays we cannot live right that has become food for us two or three days if you do not have computer uh, I mean if you do not have food it is ok, but one day if you do not see your emails the entire world will crumble. So, that are otherwise if you do not tweak tweak a tweet a uh, tweet. Uh, you, know, you cannot sleep okay. or if you do not chat with your friends whatever you eat also it will not get uh, digested. So, that is why so many things are there you know with computers. So, the, uh, the demand for silica is maximum 
right so i think someone who is interested in technology can always go for this production of silica pure silica as chemical engineers if at least one of you can do that i think it is excellent you will become billionaire and then you can come to iit as chairman board of governors okay <laughs> yeah that's what normally you know very high level uh, industrialists or math uh, or uh, academicians are given as chairman board of governors to direct us what we have to do in iits okay anyway so this is the information about the uh, yeah okay type 2 uh, yeah the difference between type a and type 2 reactions and this is one of the famous reactions and uh, another there are many for example rusting of iron that every day we see but we never appreciate that one as one of the non catalytic reactions <laughs> right okay so this is feo solid plus o2 gas giving us feo feo solid again you know this is uh, i mean for me everything is exciting i say i don't know for you how many things are really exciting no every day we see here and uh, the rust also will not form that nicely all the time sometimes if you see your cycle you will see that you know the uh, some uh, material will come off as flakes and somewhere it will beautifully deposit as grains why we never discuss you never even observe ha huh? yeah that's what that, that is a chemical reaction okay that's what my interest is different forms of react corrosion is not simply it is a non catalytic reaction now but of course in it madras what is happening now is any cycle whatever is by you is it is stolen right i think in hostels many cycles are stolen that's what people are telling okay ha huh. ah yeah yeah sorry sorry yeah this is uh, balance 2 no ah this is two. this is two correct huh? yeah so like that we can list out even type uh, a type b then there are two more or three more 